D Magazine is so supportive of this program and Big D Reads because we believe it really is important for the community to come together and read the accommodation so that we can start to better understand each other and how important it is to know our history so that we don't continue to make the same mistakes so that we can truly make life better for all Dallasites um, every single day. Um, it is important for me to be here because my family uh, was pretty much, that's where we came from. Okay, so South Dallas is where all of my family was born in one house. Uh, so they definitely know the struggles of what's in that book. I mean, I've already listened to the book. It was a hard read, but it was necessary. And if nothing else, I'm here for my family. Well, we want to read with, we want to read with Dallas. And we, uh, we have the first edition of Commendations. And so we wanted to keep up with it as it's updated, and so we can keep up with the relevancy of all the issues that impact, impact on Dallas, Texas. This is such a momentous occasion. It's to a be, wonderful. Be in the audience to hear Jim speak. Um, this is a long time coming, and we are so excited to be here. That's right. And uh, in 1986, I was a Dallas newspaper columnist. I wrote a book called The Accommodation that was a history of uh, race relations, racial politics in the city. The book was suppressed in 86. It was pulled off the presses because of pressure from uh, Dallas business leadership. It was eventually printed and it was distributed and read in southern Dallas and black Dallas. It was not read at all in white Dallas. And it was, you know, it sank beneath the waves over time. Uh, then, uh, two years ago, not it wasn't my doing, uh, Will Evans of Deep Vellum Publishing came along, said he was going to republish the book because of an interest among young people, which is really interesting to me. And I went out and uh, talked to some of those young people and said, why do you care about this book from years ago? And it was a real curiosity about why the city is the way it is, we might call it the facts on the ground. How did all the money get shoved north and poverty shoved south? I think there was an uh, uh, instinctive, uh, in, an intuition that this didn't happen accidentally. This was done. And people wanted to know how, and they found my book. They dug it up in a PDF version online as part of trying to figure out why we are where we are today. Well, it's, it's really, uh, th this business, uh, what uh, D Magazine, Dallas Reads, what they're doing is just amazing. They're taking a book that was, in 1986, there were 5,000 copies of it printed, 2,500 of them burned up in a mysterious warehouse fire. So there were only 2,500 copies of the original book. What Dallas Reads has done is they've raised money to, to print 30,000 copies of this book, which they're going to distribute for free. There's distribution to Dallas school kids. It's just, it's just such an amazing, this, this thing that we're celebrating today is just, for me, an old guy like me, it's just an almost unbelievable turnaround from the past. And what do they hope to accomplish by getting all these books printed? I, I think the, the thing about, the reason I would argue that this book has value is not to go back and assign blame and shame to the people of the past. They don't care, they're dead. Uh, the, the, the value of reading the book is to figure out exactly what was done, by whom, when, what were the specific policies, the actions, the things that were done to create the facts on the ground of today, only when we know how it was done do we know how to undo it. It's not enough to just say, oh, we're going to do better, we're going to be more just. we got to figure out what the injustices were specifically so that we can remedy them. It's important for me to be here today because I feel it's a historic moment and, of course, one that's probably many, many years too late, but it's an important day, a documentation, a kind of validation of what has happened in Dallas in the past to help us move forward to the future, and I just want to be part of that.
Yeah, Amazon is delighted to serve as the presenting sponsor of the 2022 Big D Reads Initiative. We're so proud to be a part of this program, to have the conversations in this community that help us understand our past, but we also want to be part of the dialogue that helps move Dallas forward for all residents, no matter which zip code you live in. And that's why we're so proud to be here and to you know participate in this citywide read of the accommodation. Perfect. My name is Michael Berry. I'm the executive director for Youth Guidance Dallas. It's important for me to be here today as we think about reconciling with our history here in Dallas and how we can make it better. Um, it takes all of us to be together and we got to learn our history. And so with that, uh, I'm excited about learning more. Hi, I'm Will Evans. Uh, I'm the publisher and executive director at Deep Vellum. And uh, I'm very excited to be here today for Big D Reads to celebrate this citywide book club for the accommodation written by Jim Schutz. We at Deep Vellum published the hardcover version of the accommodation, or I should say we republished the accommodation. After it had been out of print for 35 years, in 2021, we were able to republish this amazing and vital work and bring it back to readers uh, in a print format. And it's amazing to be here for Big D Reads today because we're going to be giving away 30,000 copies of a paperback to readers throughout the city. And this is just a kickoff for an entire month of book club programming to really bring Dallas in conversation about a book. That's the mission of Deep Vellum. That's why we're a nonprofit, is the ability to bring readers and writers into discussion about the topics, themes, and art that change the world around us. And everything that we do is about how readers and writers can and do change our world, change our city. And The Accommodation is a book that we really hope uh, offers a conversation about how we come together as a city to, uh, to start the process of reconciliation and build an even better, more unified city. And so to be here today and to see so many amazing faces from around the different communities of Dallas united around the book, that's what it's all about. Good morning. I am David Woody, President and CEO of the Bridge Homeless Recovery Center. What a fantastic opportunity this is to get important reading material in front of our community about how it is that we are where we are at. At the Bridge Homeless Recovery Center, we are about offering folks access to basic resources that would not allow them to become homeless. That our community is beginning an examination of how we got here and where we need to go. What are the solutions is incredible. Enjoy this day, enjoy this month of getting in touch with a well-written history of Dallas and getting better. It's important for me to be here today because we are at a new period of time in the city of Dallas for transformational relationships to take place and a collective impact to, to be part of our continued journey of building a beloved Dallas. Good morning. I'm Judge Rhonda Hunter. I'm here at the release of the re-release of the accommodation at Big D Reads. I used to work at the Dallas Public Library many years ago before I was a lawyer, and I'm very excited to see so many people here for the re-release of this book that I've heard about for my whole adult life. I'm looking forward to hearing from Jim Schultz and the rest of the crew this morning. Hi, my name is Gino. Uh, I'm a local poet, uh, a resident of Dallas, Texas, Highland Hills in particular and here to uh, celebrate uh, the re-release of Accommodation. Uh, this book portrays Dallas in all of its good, its bad, and its ugly. As a, uh, a resident of Highland Hills, which is mentioned in the book, uh, it's dear to me and uh, happy to be here. Get that book. Hi, I am Tisha Owens with the City of Dallas Citizens Homeless Commission. And what's so exciting about being here today is hearing the movement that's happening. This wonderful author is here sharing about what's happening in the community and how we impact those around us when we get together and unify. So I'm excited about learning about collaboration and how when we join forces, we can literally change the world. So I'm looking forward to hearing about what's happening today and being a part of the movement. Again, I am Tisha Owens. Um, it's important for me to um, <laughs> it is important for me to be here for a number of reasons. Um, one, this is my family history. Um, my family is uh, from Southern and South Dallas, um, long-term, you know, long-standing family members. But also, I serve as the chair of the Friends of Juanita Craft Civil Rights House and Museum. And uh, this history tells all of our collective history here in Dallas. 
As a proud resident of South Oak Cliff, I believe there's so many stories that are untold. And as much as we love this beautiful city, there's a lot that we need to know about the unpretty truth of our cities. And I think if we can read about it, face our truths, then we can heal together and we can move forward as a more equitable city. All right, I am Lubbock Smith III. I am the Director of Community Development and Vista Outreach at Vista Bank. I, ha I have had the honor and privilege on today to come out to Big D Reads for the book for this year for the accommodation. This book is very important based on all the history regarding desegregation within Oak Cliff, South Dallas, and just Dallas in general, for us to be able to learn how we can overcome our past through racial reconciliation, being able to really fight injustices and things that we see on a day in, day out basis. Uh, so that way we can work towards real progress and growth uh, economically, politically, uh, socially in every area of our communities, especially for Oak Cliff, South Dallas, uh, where I am also a resident and born and raised from. Uh, moving to South Dallas is very important, and being able to have this be a part of the, the community and the impact that we're making there is very important. And I'm very proud that Vista Bank um, is a part of that effort, being able to have these conversations and actually bring us solutions, real solutions, in order to overcome these disparities that we've seen uh, for decades. So uh, th today's event was huge, was amazing to see so many different people out on today and finding out ways and how we can come together through our resources and connectedness in order to create greater uh, change uh, through all these efforts. The goal of 2022 Big D Reads is to build on the efforts of previous years and focus more on Dallas and our own story. We hope that the accommodation and the 40 plus events planned around it will educate, inspire, and bring disparate groups of people together across our city to help forge a more equitable future for Dallas. Hi, my name is Joaquin Cihuataneo, and I am your Dallas Poet Laureate, the inaugural Dallas Poet Laureate for the city of Dallas. Uh, the mayor proclaimed it such in April, and I'm going to be serving a two-year term. And I'm so excited to be here today because one of my first duties as Dallas Poet Laureate was I was commissioned to craft an original poem inspired by two things, the accommodation by Jim Schutz and the city of Dallas. And being, being someone who was born and raised in East Dallas, a product of the DISD, someone who calls this place home and always will, I can't think of a higher honor that I've been asked to be given. And it took weeks to craft this poem, to get it just right, because this book is so important, so significant. You really can't call yourself a Dallasite if you haven't had this book in your hand and made it a part of your life. So I'm honored to have been, been the one who selected to write a poem about it. Let us do more than simply move beyond the past. Let us learn from it. Let us change both in spite and because of it. For so long we've been reaping what we sow, knowing what we know all along, all along, that smoke fades while terror tends to linger. I've been trying to put my finger on this place called Dallas for a while now. How people love to simplify. That whole beautiful shining city of the southern sunbelt reeks of black ties and white lies. Dallas is much more diverse and conflicted and beautiful than that. It's hoop dreams and inner city youth. It's Jim Shoots telling an awful truth in a poignant and necessary way. It's Will Evans publishing a book written 36 years ago today. It's a Southside single mom working two jobs to make ends meet. It's loving someone this way and never letting go. It's waking up to laugh with Jeff Jr. and Gordo. It's a young, strong black mare leading us into a new day. It's breathing free. At least it should be. Walking city streets, never feeling restricted. It's Mark Melton fighting for the unjustly evicted. It's a non-binary black poet reminding every queer person in this city that you are a snowflake, born to be the most beautiful thing in life you can be. Yourself. It's me, at age 19, peering through Parkland pediatric glass to catch a glimpse of my newborn daughter. It's Robert Wolanski and Sarah Gargona honoring their fathers with what they create with how they live, it's word space and care and action, all that she selflessly gives. It's Sylvia Komatsu devoting herself to public media every single day. The 40 plus years of service and heart she pours into KERA. It's Joe Guidus guiding us in all things library, equity, and design. It's Anita Nanez Martinez reminding us that Valle Folklorico is divine. It's Pleasant Grove. Highland Hills and 10th Street Freedman's Town. It's a journeyman creating safe space down a diverse lounge. It's shutting down the small town country club oligarchy with its stones and sticks, its urban politics. Closing the door and speaking soft-spoken truths betrays this city's youth. Believe me when I say they are desperate to know where they come from. 
Let us make it our duty to teach our children their history in all its ugliness, in all its beauty. What if equality, fairness, and generosity was what we sow? What if we do something revolutionary like take some of the funding set aside for the Ross Perot and give it to black and brown owned theaters to help them grow, to show them that this city, our city, sees them. So let us confront the truth in topic lyrics reverberating through UTD and SMU dorm halls that Daniel Yana has painted in murals on West Side walls. It's equal parts Steve Ray Vaughan and Bach. It's Jess Garland teaching girls how to rock. It's a city finding a way to not only acknowledge but support the activists, artists, the, the advocates that make this city extraordinary. But after all this, they still say there is no real reason for a place called Dallas. I say everyone gathered here today is reason enough. Dallas is a place where wellness begins. It's the momentous institute building social emotional health in our youth. It's Vicki Meek in the South Dallas Cultural Center teaching young people to find the artist that lives within. It's the Aberg Center for Literacy teaching refugee children. It's Artitude, supporting queer artists who paint and write towards catharsis. It's the Austin Street Center at lifting up those in need. It's the Senior Source, helping the bereaved. These are among the reasons for a place called Dallas. It's me. It's you. Sonny Brian's Barbecue. <laughs> it's my abuelo whispering to me, tu voz es tu poder. Words I will never forget. It's a young, brown, poor barrio boy growing up to be your Dallas Poet Laureate. It's always fighting the just and good fight. It's a street poet, righting wrongs with all his might. It's everything we've been through and all the good we will do. So let it begin with you, you, me, we, you, me, we. We are the reason for a place called Dallas. Thank you all so much. It goes without saying that there was a time when, when magazines and newspapers and foundations in Dallas did not unite to support the accommodation. And I don't know what has changed in Dallas in the 36 years since this book was banned before it was published. It was censored before it was published. These things are real. Censorship is a very real problem in our world today. Deep Valley was founded to take the stories that we don't know yet and to elevate them, to find the literary artists everywhere in the world, whether they're Jim Shoots or from Pleasant Grove or from countries and languages you maybe have never heard of, and to elevate those stories so that we can have a discussion and learn from each other and move forward to build a better world, a better community that we all want to see. That's it. The fact that this book is being published, I can say without any false modesty, is something for which I get no credit. It came to me as an utter surprise from, from Will and from the community and from people sitting right here today, the fact that you've done this, that Big D reads and the magazine and, and Christine and Joey Allison, the, <clears throat> the fact that this has happened is sort of, I'm still trying to get my head wrapped around it. I don't think the book's worth anything as a tool for going back and shaming and blaming the people of the past. They don't care, they're dead. Uh, <laughs> The, the, what, and it affords a certain smugness where we can feel superior to the past. Much more important is for us to go back and understand the specific steps that brought us where we are, why these facts are on the ground, why there are these differences, and then we have the tools we need to, to undo those acts of the past. <laughs>